Welcome to the Macmillan Report. I'm Marilyn Wilkes, your host, and our guest is Shi Chen, an assistant professor at Yale School of Public Health. Professor Chen's research interests involve health and development economics. His work explores how social interactions affect health behavior and outcomes and how socioeconomic status drives social competition. Today we'll talk with Professor Chen about how keeping up with the Joneses is contributing to poverty and health problems in China. Welcome Professor Chen. Thank you very much. It's my pleasure to be here. So let's start with me, um, I guess, asking you how you came to study this topic. Is there anything in particular that led you to it? Uh, to be perfectly honest, uh, is this, a, it, this is a combination of uh, luck and the past dependence. So I was trained as an agricultural economist. Mm -hmm. And you know, m most of the people in this world are living in poverty. And, uh, the, uh, and so if you know uh, the people are being poor, then you know much of the uh, economics that really matters. And uh, most of the poor people really uh, rely on agriculture to earn their living. Mm -hmm. So if you know uh, the economics of agriculture, then you know much of the economics of being poor. Mm -hmm. So that's, that was an uh, opening remark by uh, uh, Theodore Schultz in the 1979 Nobel uh, Prize lecture. Mm -hmm. And I think it's no less true today than it was like uh, 30, more than 30 years ago. So that's, uh, uh, I'm lucky to be in the program, in the agricultural e economics program. Mm -hmm. And uh, because I'm, I was enrolled in the program, I have many chance to um, go to the field to talk to farmers. So many of the studies you mentioned, just a few um, uh, came uh, into my mind uh, due to my field trip. So mm -hmm. for example, uh, you mentioned that I'm working on like health behavior. Uh, especially the stigmatized behavior. Uh, I was in the field in central part of China. Uh, at that moment, uh, I surveyed the farmers and uh, talked to them, asked them detailed uh, uh, consumption and uh, income. And uh, suddenly I realized there's a huge gap between the two. Mm -hmm. So how could they spend so much but without a very, uh, very large income? Right. So then, then the farmers was very shy. They told me that uh, they also engage in blood cells. So that reminded me of the, all the literature uh, I say about the broader market of st stigmatized. For example, in India, there's a large organ cell market and uh, there, there's a stigmatized uh, uh, market associated with this type of behavior. Mm -hmm. so, so that linked my observation to the larger literature. And the secondly, you also mentioned uh, uh, like a gift spending, festival spending. So that's also coming into my mind when I was uh, in the coastal region, in, mm -hmm. uh, in the suburb of out of Shanghai. I, I, I was on a bus and uh, I met a migrant worker who told me that uh, if um, three of his friends uh, hold weddings in a single month, then he will run out of the money. Mm -hmm. So wow. that's a huge burden for them. Sure. So I was lucky to be in a field survey in Western China, another area. Mm -hmm. Then I, uh, the first day I was in the field, I, I ran into a, a wedding, very luxury wedding uh, uh, went on in that region, mm -hmm. and I attended the wedding. From that time on, I realized uh, how uh, wasteful those consumptions could be. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, let's talk specifically about the research that you've done. Give us a brief overview of it. Yeah, my research uh, is actually an, uh, uh, is at the intersection of uh, basically three things, uh, public health, uh, development, and the health, uh, and the labor economics. Mm -hmm. Those three things, are, um, are, uh, I have a, lo a lot of interest in doing, looking at how poor people, they behave differently from other, uh, other populations and uh, how it affects their economic and uh, well-being and how it affects their, their health. Mm -hmm. So for example, to highlight some of my research, the first thing I'm interested in is, uh, is to look at how social interactions affect their behavior. So, uh, so that's why the first uh, uh, the first the natural question coming to uh, my mind is uh, uh, how the social network can evolve. Mm -hmm. So I'm working with a PhD student at the Yale Economics Department mm -hmm. to look at more 
uh, to develop uh, theoretical and uh, empirical methods to better improve uh, the previously uh, previous uh, estimation methods for mm-hmm. uh, for link formation. So okay. we we have more flexible estimation, and then we introduce utility function. Mm-hmm. People form a uh, link because they feel it's better to form than not to form. Mm-hmm. So we we introduce such uh, utility function, very classical economics mm-hmm. utility function into the into the framework. Okay. And also uh, for the second uh, uh, area. Um, uh, on the uh, gift uh, and the uh, uh, spending uh, escalation, actually, I link that to the large literature of child uh, early development, mm-hmm. um, especially in utero. People nowadays more and more uh, realize that uh, the first uh, few months in utero is very important for their well-being. Mm-hmm. So we try to test uh, how uh, uh, those predictions can have on for the children for a longer period into their labor market performance, mm-hmm. their well-being. And the, uh, the work we are doing are quite different. Unlike the natural disasters, um, nuclear fallouts, those things, mm-hmm. I'm looking at a very basic and everyday experience. Everyday things, right, so right. That I think that's a very relevant to the most the poor people. Mm-hmm. So you are, um, and what parts of China are you looking at? Basically, um, uh, my, um, I'm recently looking at Western China, okay. but also um, looking more broadly to other countries. Okay. So basically, yeah. though, it is um, generally the poor population in yeah. agricultural areas? Yes. Okay. Yes. So these people are engaging in gift giving as part of their yeah. culture, yeah. and they're giving beyond their means. Yeah. That's what you're yeah. finding. And that has a health effect on their children because they're not getting... Um, the appropriate nutrition, yeah. probably, and are, is there anything else contributing to the, the health issues? Uh, the uh, partly uh, 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 one of the reasons of the, those type of gift giving uh, is, um, uh, in my research, is due to the, uh, the due to the changing demographic conditions. Okay. For example, the. You can say uh, say that nowadays because of the son preference and the one child policy in China, mm-hmm. some other countries don't have one child policy, but they have some preference. Then it means a lot to the marriage market. A lot of uh, surplus sons uh, were born than women. So mm-hmm. so that totally shape reshape the balance of the marriage market, okay. and uh, the son's family need to uh, through a very luxury weddings and invest in cars, housing stuff mm-hmm. using their life savings to right. to uh, to invest in those uh, ceremonies so mm-hmm. so in the field we actually find that uh, the groom's family they organize uh, a far more lavish uh, weddings than girls families mm-hmm. they don't do much of that okay. so that's a demographic condition that mm-hmm. changing the the gift giving and the ceremony uh, spending and the second thing important is the inequality issue uh, in China, the, the Gini coefficient is, uh, the official rate is passing 0.45. That's a very alarming point. Mm-hmm. But ac- according to some non-official statistics, like some surveys by universities, mm-hmm. they show that the Gini coefficient is more than 0.61. So that's really alarming. This means that when the people, some group of people becoming rich, they may like drive up the the competition about uh, for the for the poor guys mm-hmm. and in China you know maybe there is no much safety nets and uh, um, the same e- um, consumption by the poor and the rich can mean different totally different things so they want to catch up but they have very f- scarce resources right. so my uh, while my papers was uh, referenced in the uh, economist magazine they the in the magazine they first talk about uh, how the rich people they uh, 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 they uh, like seeking status mm-hmm. and they like buy luxury goods in Paris. Mm-hmm. But uh, uh, then the, in the second part, they talk about uh, uh, the motives not uh, restricted to the rich people. Actually, for the poor, mm-hmm. they, they have more incentive to climb social ladders. So that's the second thing. Mm-hmm. The third thing is very concrete. It's about remittance. In, uh, in 2004, uh, China uh, has passed the very famous uh, Lewis turning point. That means uh, 
the laborers are becoming very uh, scarce and the wage rate are driven up. Mm -hmm. If we look at the, uh, the gift data we collected mm -hmm. and uh, also, the, uh, also the, the, the wage increasing rate, you put these two figures together, you will see that they match very well. So that means, um, and in our rigorous uh, analysis, we also find the uh, remittance also drive up this price. Um, uh, a lot of people, young people, the young generation, they mi migrate out mm -hmm. and they, they send the remittances okay. in cash and in kind to their parents. Mm -hmm. And the parents may spend it differently. They, they treat this type of income as a wonderful income. So they, they are easy come, easy go. So. Uh, so they are uh, disproportionately spent on uh, 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 ceremonies. And mm -hmm. we also find that for families without those uh, um, type of wonderful income or remittances, uh, they still, uh, there is a spillover effect to those families mm -hmm. uh, if they are in the network of families with uh, large remittances. Mm -hmm. So these three things, I think the main uh, uh, factors that have driven the escalation of the gifts. Okay, so I mean, is there any end in sight? I mean, how much will this? Uh, how much can this possibly progress to? It seems already that it's yeah. out of control. Yeah. So, what do you think is going to happen? Uh, I think you, in the near future, you can say uh, more and more such spending because uh, the overall. Uh, income growth rate is very high, so mm -hmm. you still see a lot of resources being put into these uh, activities. Mm -hmm. But uh, gradually, I think people will drop, uh, drop out of from, mm -hmm. and they may feel reluctant to be uh, dropping out of this, uh, like a gift and a ceremony spending. Mm -hmm. uh, but on the other hand, there are some like uh, uh, social security program going on that also like uh, reduce such re a reliance on the informal social networks, uh, social spending or gifts. Mm -hmm. For example, the recent, uh, um, uh, the recent uh, uh, implementation of the old age pension in China in rural area, mm -hmm. which cover most of people. And uh, our study now shows some initial results showing that uh, uh, people are becoming less reliant on the on the gift spending as an informal way, uh, informal way to ensure against the future risks. Uh, the reason is that they, with more pension income, mm -hmm. they become more economically independent. Right. Not only independent from their adult children, but also from the, the community mm -hmm. where they live. Okay, so, uh, so the gift giving, what is the purpose of the gift giving? T to get them some secure status in society? Yeah, the I'm gift not, giving, so there, are, uh, there are many like motives. Uh, for example, people give gifts just uh, want to ensure against the future risk. For example, they realize in the future they want to hold ceremonies. Mm -hmm. They want to other people to contribute. Right. So defray some of the costs. That's one okay. reason. Okay. So yeah. you give to others. So then down the yeah. road, when you yeah. need to have yeah. something, then they'll give to you yes. for your. Yeah. Um, so that's okay. basically not changing in the mm -hmm. thousands of years. That's a, a very basic form of uh, mutual insurance. Okay. But real, uh, what's really worrisome is about the escalating part, right, which right. is not uh, explained by this cultural mm -hmm. norm. The social norm is not. Uh, changing, it, it evolves very slowly, mm -hmm. but uh, some sudden change from outside, uh, like the, the sex ratio things, mm -hmm. and, and uh, the remittances, like inequality, mm -hmm. just uh, happened in the recent decades. This can totally change the equilibrium mm -hmm. that, that make people to contribute to send more gifts. I see, okay. Let, and let's touch back again on the health concerns, the in utero yeah. part. Explain that again to me, how it's affecting that particular situation. Oh, uh, this is a, um, there's a large literature on uh, this hypothesis called uh, um, Bucker hypothesis or fetal origin hypothesis, which shows that uh, uh, if there's a external shocks to the in utero period, mm -hmm. this will last long into the future like uh, in the labor market into mm -hmm. like uh, chronic diseases. So, and especially in the first uh, trimester of the in utero. Mm -hmm. uh, so in our analysis, we can separate uh, 
the shocks of uh, social events like uh, weddings, funerals, mm -hmm. hosted by the fellow villagers in the in the village. Mm -hmm. uh, so not only uh, not by the, their own uh, household, but by other people around, and show how it af affects the people differently in different trimesters. First the trimester, second and the third trimester, mm -hmm. and we uh, look at some some very well uh, used uh, in the health indicators like uh, height for age mm -hmm. because height is a uh, uh, very useful indicator to indicate long-term um, nutritional status okay. and we also look at the weight weight is uh, is more immediate measures of this okay. and also we link our findings to the larger literature on like uh, on diabetes uh, obesity those mm -hmm. issues because uh, they all predict that a loss of weight or stunting or wasting, they can uh, predict a long-term loss, for example, uh, have higher chance to have uh, uh, diabetes in the, in, the early li uh, in the later life. Okay, interesting. Okay, so I, again, I just want to come back to, you are um, arguing that the gift giving, basically because they're giving so much money in gifts, that women are not eating enough during pregnancy and that's yeah. affecting their yeah. children. Yeah. Yes, okay. Um, so how, moving forward, how do you um, improve upon that situation? Do you see any way to um, lessen that happening? Oh, this this is a very good question. So we need to like think about the policy implication, mm -hmm. how we can intervene. So, uh, uh, the, but it's really hard. But uh, we can like uh, firstly, I think the research can suggest to the uh, anti-poverty programs. We have a lot of anti-poverty programs in the world, mm -hmm. and in South Asia, in Africa. But we still say that uh, people like throwing lavish weddings, funerals in Ghana, in South Africa. Mm -hmm. In India, they build empty house, but no people live inside. So oh. they just want to show status. In China, gift giving is one uh, important thing. Mm -hmm. And the bride price and dowry in India is, uh, is very huge for those poor families. Mm -hmm. uh, so we need to think about whether the traditional or the conventional uh, anti-poverty measure program is uh, uh, effective enough. Um, we, uh, for the conventional poverty program, they only care about uh, to lifting people out of poverty by measure of income, but uh, they are not uh, uh, spending much too much time on looking at how people spend those money. Mm -hmm. So how spend this money is really matters to their well-being. Uh -huh. So, so we, um, so one thing I think we can like suggest is uh, is to. Uh, is to like uh, study the key players in those events. Uh, when, uh, for example, when you have a network uh, information, you know who is the uh, key player in right. those social network. Then if you target the key player in those events, then it will have a spillover effect to mm -hmm. generate right. multiplier effect to the people around. Mm -hmm. So that will become more efficient. And even if for some data, I know it's quite costly to collect uh, uh, social, uh, uh, social network interaction measures, but you still know that uh, in a community, who is the more powerful guy, right. who make decisions. Usually in my study, I find that those people, the, the party leaders, the, the village leaders, they, they actually spend more mm -hmm. on gifts and they are very popular to receive gifts from other people mm -hmm. when they host the ceremonies. So if you target those people without in, uh, social network information, it will be st still be proved to be very efficient. And uh, also, uh, we in the, in the long run, we, uh, we also need to think about uh, what factors really uh, like change the equilibrium, mm -hmm. uh, not only this network uh, things. For example, as I mentioned, the inequality and also the demographic condition, mm -hmm. like more men than women in the labor right. market. If we don't fundamentally changing this, uh, these uh, factors, then we will still say uh, those gifts or spendings uh, squeeze out the basic consumption. Right. So we need to uh, fundamentally changing the democratic condition, changing the way people spend their remittances, mm -hmm. and changing the way people own money and uh, redistrib uh, redistribute right. their wealth, then we can uh, finally 
uh, yeah. tackle this issue. It seems like it will be a difficult mm -hmm. issue to tackle, especially because it seems to be so culturally ingrained yeah. in society. Exactly. So because of that, it seems yeah. like it's a very difficult um, problem to overcome, unfortunately. Yeah. But it sounds like you're making some progress with it, so that's yeah. good. Okay, thank well, you. thank you for being here today and uh, sharing some of your work. Thank you very much. For more information about Professor Chen and his research, please visit our website at yale.edu slash Report. Be sure to join us again for another episode of the Macmillan Report, made possible through funding from the Whitney and Betty Macmillan Center for International and Area Studies at Yale.